Hello, everybody. In today's <laughs> video. <laughs> okay, okay, my turn, my turn. Hello, everybody. In today's video, we're going to be looking at a bunch of uh, vintage or, well, retro Bimani pockets. Well, the first question is, what are Bimani Pockets? Bimani Pockets are these handheld portable devices that Konami made back in uh, the late 1990s to advertise things, I think. That's the kind of impression I get from looking at the information about these Bimani Pockets. Bimani Pockets are the small pocket-sized versions of the arcade machines and arcade games that Konami had, which includes Beat Mania, Dance Dance Revolution, Pop and Music, and a few more. There isn't much information online about the Bimani Pockets, in English anyway. The Wikipedia page is quite barren actually, so I went to do a bit more digging in a bunch of Japanese websites and I found a few more information about these things. There are currently 25 different Bimani Pockets. 15 of them are different versions of the Beatmania Pocket 2, and 4 of them are different versions of Dantan's Revolution Pocket, and 2 of them are Guitar Freaks. The rest are just one-off versions of different games like the Para Para Paradise Pocket, and the pop and pocket, which there is only one. I say that they are mostly an advertising stunt or thing because uh, most of the versions of the Beat Mania or the Dance Dance Revolution pockets were kind of advertising ish to me. They were mostly collaborations. For example, there was the DDR Hello Kitty pocket, and there was also the Beat Mania Hello Kitty pocket. And they also had a kawaii version of the Beat Mania pocket, which was a collaboration with a high school girl magazine. I don't know what Konami was trying to get at. I don't. I can't imagine a bunch of high school girls playing Beatmania, but then I exist. And then they also have this really weird collaboration that's the Bimani Tigers edition. Where Tigers is where they made this pocket to support and advertise the Hanshin Tigers, which is the baseball team that was competing against something at the time. It's really weird, but um, well, it's cool. There's not much information on how, how many units they actually sold or how popular they were, but I imagine they were popular enough to release 25 different pockets in the span of 3 years. They were probably quite popular. The pockets themselves are very small, they only contain a few songs, and uh, from what I'm reading online, some of them actually have hidden songs in them if you clear normal mode. One of the pockets are not like the rest, which is the Bimani Pop Flash. This is not a pocket that's based on an arcade game or machine, it's completely different and I have never seen any information on this anywhere at all. I only can find it on one place and this is the only picture I ever have of it. So the Pop Flash is a watch that has normal watch functions. It has time display, calendar display and alarm functions. But apparently it also has a music game on it. How the game works is moving a scratch, which is a dial thing at the right side of the watch, according to two types of bars falling from the top of the screen. And the only song you can play is a completely original song. Uh, according to the review website that I read it from, they say that the song isn't very great. <laughs> the last mention Konami has ever made of the pockets was a joke tweet on April 1st, 2018, where the Jubit staff made this mock-up image of making and releasing a Jubit pocket. When I saw this, I was actually a little bit excited, but then realized that it was a complete joke. It's not possible to make this kind of thing. There is also an official Konami strategy guide for the Bimani pockets that costed about 1,100 yen. It, it details all the pockets and guides on how to do it. I don't have this book and this is the only image I could find of it. It's really interesting. I wish I had it. I wish I could read it, but it's probably all in Japanese too. And also according to the guide, the Bimani pockets have 30 days of battery life if you play the pocket like 2, two hours every day, which is impressive. But it's, it's kind of expected from these black and white and no backlight uh, handouts. So the question is where can you buy these pockets? You can buy them secondhand on Amazon.jp, Mercari or Yahoo Japan auctions. These things are no longer being created or produced anymore by Konami, and that's that's where I got mine. A and so let's start looking at the pockets, since it's been a bit of explaining. Alright, so here are my pockets. I have a Beatmania Pocket and then the Beatmania Pocket 2 and then I have the Guitar Freaks 2 Pocket. I also have a Pop and Music Pocket which sadly isn't working and a DDR Pocket which I don't have the box for. Uh, let's look at the very first Pocket which is the Beatmania Pocket. This is the very first Pocket that Konami released and it's also based on their really popular game, Beatmania. Uh, just note that this is based on their Beatmania game, not Beatmania 2DX, which has 7 buttons and turntable on the left and right, depending on which player you are. In the original Beatmania, the turntable is only on the left, therefore only 2P. Alright, so let's open this thing up. So the pockets only come in these uh, packaging. It's all the same. Uh, they have the cardboard itself. And inside they have, they give you a strap, 
and they have a manual. A bunch of cards. Oh, this is. I think this is. Uh, not sure what card this is. So they tell you how to get how to set it up. And different modes, and the songs they have. So you can tell that the Beatmania pocket looks really different compared to the rest of the pockets because it is very angular compared to the other the rest. All right, so this is the pocket itself. You can tell this is the perm this is the permanent screen that you'll see no matter what. And the turntable, unlike the actual turntable in the arcade, it only moves like this. You can hear it? And this is the back. There is no volume down, nothing. So let's put in some batteries. So this is how it looks like when it's on. The game is really quiet. So uh, because of that, I prepared speakers to put into their headphone jack. Here we go, this should be louder. Alright, so they have free play, normal, and practice, and auto play. But let's look at normal. The buttons are quite mushy and it's hard to press. Unlike the actual game, you can't see the colours of the notes. So it makes it a bit hard to differentiate. This is really hard. Mostly because I don't really know when to press. Do I press at the line or above the line? Just barely past that level. Yep, just barely. The game can get really crazily hard. There's no easy normal, easy normal hard difficulty selection. Just this. Why do they have jacks on this thing? I don't know. Yeah, so they don't tell you any score, just how your grading is. I, or they don't tell you your score or what your grade is, they just show you how you've done. And it's kind of hard to tell when to time and there's no high speed changing, but the original Beatmania had no high speed changes either, if I'm not wrong. That's it, game over. This is how the original Beatmania was like. So the next song we'll be looking at is the Beatmania Pocket 2. Uh, it starts looking a bit different. So the cardboard. Then we have everything inside uh, a bag here. I don't think I want to open it. I, I really can guess what's inside. And I don't want to open something that hasn't been opened before. So this is how it looks like. 
Uh, there's more color in this one. The original had l- it was just lines. And the thickness, this is thicker. Generally feels more well made and the buttons are easy to press on this. This is the second Bimani Pocket they made. I wish I had the last Bimani Pocket they made, which is uh, another arcade game, which is Para Para Paradise. Uh, similar to Dance Evolution, where you you know you dance and it, the game uses sensors to sense your movements to movements in the game. Headphone jack is still at the same spot. Here we go. Uh, they made the turntable line a lot smaller than the previous one. Previous one had a uh, way big, way too big space for the turntable. Alright, this is how it looks like. Same thing, practice normal, free play, auto play. So let's go with normal. Also smaller. Groove gauge on here is. I think the groove gauge on this is more lenient. I am not sure though. It looks like they nerfed the difficulty in this one. DJ Battle is my favorite uh, beat mania <laughs> chart. Of being fast or hard on this turntable, I'm afraid of breaking it. Game over. And that's it for the Bimina Pocket 2. I prefer it a lot more. It's a lot nicer, and you can see there's a shade on the middle two lanes for the black buttons. It's better, it's easier to read. Now for the next one, the DDR Pocket. Uh, DDR Pocket, I'm. I heard that the. Hello Kitty and the Dear Dano version of the DDR Pocket is able to pair with each other. I'm not exactly sure what I mean by pair. I assume it's multiplayer, but I don't know how this thing would multiplayer with each with two separate pockets unless they had some sort of connection module connected. It's possible that a pair mode means that you and your friend can play at the same time, but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this. Alright, and this is the DDR Pocket. Uh, very interesting because, well, DDR is a... A game for your feet, but it is for your fingers. Uh, from my memory, the hard difficulty of this is not too difficult. So uh, let's play one song that a lot of people know. Butterfly. One of the most famous songs in DDR. The screen is not very bright on this. Well, I mean not very dark. Oh, sorry.
and that's it for DDR Pocket. Yeah. All right, now for the last one, Guitar Freaks. This one is quite different. Uh, this one's only made later down the line, and it comes with the with earpiece. I'm not gonna use it though. This thing looks old as heck, and I don't really want to touch it. Uh, so here is here is the toy itself. Quite interesting. Has a clasp. Really meant for you to put it onto your bag, I guess. I'm, but I'm more afraid of this thing breaking off, honestly. And um, Guitar Freaks is well a guitar game, but there's no strum or anything, so it's probably gonna be a lot like Mania, uh, Beat Mania, or like Mania, uh, vertical scrolling rhythm game style games, without the strumming. It's not really, yeah. Let's look at the box. All right, the box is the same thing. We have the oh, it's in a plastic bag. I'm not gonna open that. Oh, this is from 21st April 2001. The date says here. That's interesting. Uh, Guitar Dora is, well, like Guitar Hero, but Konami has their own version. Uh, and Guitar Freaks has been uh, adapted and added into their current new version, which is Guitar Dora, which inclu includes the guitar and the drums into one game. So alright, let's, let's pop in the batteries. The, the battery per compartment in the back is different. It no longer uses screws, but a giant screw, I guess. So you just need to, you can use your fingers to unscrew this thing. And instead of using uh, watch batteries, uh, it uses AAA batteries. I believe this is second hand when I bought it. Well, it's kind of expected that it would be second hand. There you go. Oh, it says data memory clear. That's interesting. Oh, it says guitar freak, just like the actual game. Okay, so this is the back button. This is the. I assume that one of these is the enter button. Oh, okay. Oh, it saves your high scores! That's interesting. Oh, this one is quite different. The output headphone jack is here. Okay, that makes it really awkward. And uh, apparently this Guitar Freaks 2 Pocket has... It has no songs from the, from the actual Guitar Freaks game, which is really weird. So yeah. But I think he has the more popular songs. Uh, let's go with normal. It's up scroll. This up scroll is so weird. The sound, sound on this one sounds a bit more complex. That's interesting. And that is Guitar Freaks. Oh, it shows your high scores when you do this. It tells you your score and it saves it. That's interesting. Oh, it also tells you your combo and your rank. Okay, this is very... This is very advanced. And the sound also sounds better than the very first one. Okay, I think out of all of them, my favorite one is Guitar Freaks. It is the most... It's the nicest one. But the up scroll and I don't know where the judgment line is. It's kind of hard, <laughs> hard to play. Uh, the next close second would be uh, the Beatmania Pocket 2. I like this one a lot too. I also like DDR Pocket. Well, heck, I like all of them. It's hard to say. But yeah, I, I think next up, what I really want to get is a Para Para Paradise one. That's all. And so that's that for the pockets. Anyone's reaction at the time I can imagine was just why? 
when these things were created because if you're a hardcore arcade gamer it just feels like it's really taking away from the arcade experiences these are handheld and really inferior compared to the actual arcade cabinet but I'm sure that it was so popular at the time because of the fact that it was this small toy that you could get and play with although it was probably quite a pricey toy but I can't find any exact prices of how much they were sold at when they were first released in general Konami is no stranger to making things that makes you go why and we have seen Konami making a few attempts at the portable and convenient market as seen from the pockets and Beatmania Game Boy. The 2020 edition of what they're doing right now is pro- most likely and probably the Beatmania Ultimate Mobile versions. The DDR Ultimate and Sunvolix Ultimate Mobile would be out soon I hope because I'm really curious how they'll play and I don't expect them to play well at all. It's just more of like morbid curiosity which I expect most of the people had in mind when they bought these things. And so yeah, uh... Thanks for watching the video, uh, I have no idea why I made this thing at all.